This video will show an example of how to use the variational principle to calculate the best possible approximation to the ground state uh, energy and wave function for a quantum mechanical system where we don't know the exact result. So we have our, our system that we're going to approximate here is the harmonic oscillator. So we already know the exact solution to the harmonic oscillator. The exact ground state of the harmonic oscillator looks something like e to the minus alpha x squared. So the trial wave function we're going to use is phi. Our trial wave function is e to the minus alpha x squared. This alpha is going to be determined based off of some physical parameters of the system. But let's look at what our Hamiltonian is, what our energy is, and then Go through, the, go through the motions and see if we actually get the exact result here when we use the variational principle. So our kinetic energy operator, minus h bar squared over 2 times mass, second derivative with respect to x. Typically for the harmonic oscillator, we use the reduced mass of our two atoms and our diatomic molecule, but here let's just use m for simplicity. Our potential energy function that this particle feels is 1 half kx squared, a parabola centered at the origin. The trial wave function is a Gaussian wave function centered at the origin. So e to the minus alpha x squared, alpha determines how diffuse or contracted this Gaussian function is. Our Hamiltonian is equal to the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator. And our approximate energy is going to be the integral over all space of phi star times h acting on phi. And then we need to normalize, so we divide by the numerator, which is the integral over all space, which in this case will be from negative, to infin negative infinity to infinity in x of phi star times phi. Okay, so this denominator, as I said, is going to be the normalization integral. That will be the integral from 0 negative infinity to infinity of e to the minus alpha x squared complex conjugate times e to the minus alpha x squared. There's no i here, no square root of minus 1, no imaginary part, so this complex conjugate just equals the wave function, so we can square this part here. So this gives us the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the minus 2 alpha x squared dx. And if you look up an integral like this in an integrals table, what you'll get is the result is the square root of pi over whatever our alpha is here, which in this case our alpha is 2 alpha. So this denominator is the square root of pi over 2 alpha. Next we need the two components of the Hamiltonian. We need the expectation value of the kinetic energy and the expectation value of the potential energy. So for the kinetic energy, expectation value of V, we have integral from minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus alpha x squared. Again, the complex conjugate does nothing because our wave function is real. Times the potential energy operator, 1 half kx squared, times e to the minus alpha x squared, the wave function. So moving that down to the next line, factor out a constant of 1 half k, integrate from minus infinity to infinity, take the x squared out, we have x squared, e to the minus, I believe we need a 2 alpha x in there, so let me fix that. There we go, 2 alpha x squared dx equals, and this integral, if you look up that in a table and substitute in the result, we're going to get the 1 half k times our integral 1 over 4 alpha square root of pi over 2 alpha. For our kinetic energy, we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of complex conjugate of the wave function e to the minus alpha x squared times kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x acting on our wave function e to the minus alpha x squared. The second derivative of e to the minus alpha x squared is equal to the first derivative of minus 2 alpha x e to the minus alpha x squared so using the chain rule up in the exponential. Then we have to use product rule and chain rule and you can factor out the result into this form of minus 2 alpha e to the minus alpha x squared times the quantity 1 minus 2 alpha x squared. So our expectation value for kinetic energy is now factor out the minus h bar squared over 2m minus 2 alpha we can factor out from the, our, all of our terms here. The integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus alpha x squared 
minus 2 alpha x squared e to the minus alpha x squared. So once we look the, both of those integrals up in tables and get, gather all those results together, our integral ends up being h bar squared alpha over m times square root of pi over 2 alpha minus 2 alpha times 1 over 4 alpha square root of pi over 2 alpha. This alpha cancels with that alpha. Those go away. And our final result for our kinetic energy is h bar squared alpha over 2m times the square root of pi over 2 alpha. All right, so our energy of our trial wave function, we saw is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, which is the expectation value of kinetic energy plus the expectation value of potential energy. So that's this expression right here. So substituting in our results from over here, we get h bar squared alpha over 2m plus 8 over k alpha, and every term has a square root of pi over 2 alpha. So those are all going to cancel out from each integral. So what we're left with is our energy is h bar squared alpha over 2m plus 8, plus, sorry, plus k over 8 alpha. So this is our energy. Our parameter here is going to be alpha. So we're choosing the value of alpha such that the energy of our trial wave function is the lowest possible value it can be. So what we need to do is differentiate our, the energy of our trial wave function with respect to the parameter. So de phi d alpha. Taking the derivative with respect to alpha of these two terms, we get h bar squared over 2m minus k over 8 alpha squared. And that's going to be set equal to 0. So when we, go through, when we go through that and we solve this algebra for this equals 0, what you should find is that alpha min, the value of alpha such that we have minimized the energy of our trial wave function, is going to equal the square root of k, the spring constant, times m, the mass of the system, divided by 2h bar. So now we take that alpha, substitute it back into the expression for e of phi, so e of alpha min is equal to h bar squared over 2m, substitute in square root of km over 2h bar for alpha, plus k over 8, substitute in 1 over alpha, 2h bar over square root km. Lots of things cancel. h bar squared becomes h bar. h bar goes away. Uh, square root of m up here and m down there. This one goes away. You get a square root on the bottom. You have a k, square root of k on the bottom, k in the numerator. This one goes away. That one becomes a square root. And you have an 8 up here and a 2 up there. The 2 goes away. This becomes a 4. So when we collect all of those terms, what we end up with is e of alpha min equals h bar over 4 square root of k over m for our kinetic energy plus h bar over 4 square root of k over m for our potential energy. Notice the two are equal to each other. They're each one half of the total energy. So our total energy is h bar over 2, the square root of k over m. So if you'll notice, the, the value of omega from the harmonic oscillator was equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. And this is h bar over 2 omega. So the energy, where we just took a trial wave function of the right functional form, then we computed its energy, found the minimum energy with respect to our parameter alpha. That gave us an energy of 1 half h bar omega, which is the exact ground state energy of the harmonic oscillator. And it did that because this functional form can match the exact functional form of the exact ground state wave function of the harmonic oscillator. So as we said, E of alpha min was equal to E naught for this system. So psi of alpha min, therefore, is also psi naught. So since our energy is the exact ground state energy, our wave function is also the exact ground state wave function. So what we have then is that psi of alpha min of x is equal to 2 alpha over pi to the 1 fourth times e to the minus, substituting in our value of alpha. And we also added this normalization constant. So substituting in for alpha, we get e to the minus square root of km over 2h bar x squared, which if you compare to our previous video on the harmonic oscillator is the exact ground state wave function of the harmonic oscillator.